Tristan from Five Deadly Venoms Martial Arts here. A few days ago I had the privilege of having Gabriel Varga help me where he tried to fix my kickboxing and I'll upload that shortly. At the end of the session I had a chance to pick his brain on how he runs his camps, what he does to mentally prepare for fights etc. Now if you don't know Gabriel Varga, he is an absolutely brilliant kickboxer. He used to be glory champ, he was a Bellator's kickboxing champ, he competes in karate combat, he has a bunch of other titles. Very very good kickboxer, very cool guy. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this and thank you to Gabriel Varga for doing it. Do you do anything specific to mentally prepare for a fight? Yeah, well, I have my whole own personal routine now, which has sort of been developed throughout years and years and years. So I'll just start from, I'll just take you through all the little points that I have a, a whole number of them. Sometimes I forget them until I get in the camp. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that. But just off the top of my head, my camp starts at 10 weeks. At the 10 week point, so week one for me is just getting back into shape. There's not too much there. It's just, okay, we'll just do a cruisy week at 50% effort, just get the body moving again, get the Things so the first element of me sort of taking the fight seriously is start watching fight footage. So I'll watch the fight footage on the guy over and over and over and over. Not so much that I'm going to find any new information, just the fact that I build a level of comfort with mm. the visual of what they look like. So when I see them for the first time, I'm not like, oh, that's a really scary looking dude. Uh, you know, he's got more muscles than me. Just, just build the comfort with, with who they are as a person. Uh, I have a whole bunch of weird things I do where like at week seven, I cut out all bad food. Mm -hmm. you know, some people have like days or something like that, which is probably fine. But I just go like monk, monk diet. I'm like, I'm doing this 100%. I don't want to do it 99% diet. I want to do 100%. Uh, three weeks out, I cut out basically every food that I like. <laughs> not, because, not, be, not because it serves any purpose because most of the food I like is actually very healthy just because I like getting upset i guess to a certain extent i just go okay like you know sushi is my favorite food i can't eat sushi i have to eat something else tonight i don't like as much and it just kind of puts me on just slightly on the edge just because i don't really have a angry personality or anything so i just need something to help me just feel like okay a fight is coming and i'm sacrificing for that fight so i guess i make some sacrifices um and stop having sex a week before the fight just, just things like that where I'm just like, you know, I don't, I don't know if they help or not, but I do feel like mentally they, they put me in the right fight mindset. Well, I suppose they help in that sense. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. Um, I have a whole, a whole slew of routines about recovery throughout fight camp that I make myself do. Like, you know, I have to do my red light therapy sessions, such as like the red light that's pointing at you and apparently helps with healing. I have uh, the ice baths or cold contrast showers that I do, mm. all these little things, which I go without them. I'll probably still perform well. I'll probably be almost as good, but if they give me a 1% edge, I'll take it. Yeah. No, no stone uh, left unturned kind of. Uh... Yeah, pretty much. It's just, it's just anything I can do at this point, which is going to help me, I might as well do it. Now that you're in karate combat, the gloves are small. Do you have like a, is there a ratio in how much you go with big gloves? Do you sort of transition just to small gloves? Or is how, how do you balance it? If I was in a different stage of my career or I knew I was more open to changes, I would have probably treated it differently. But because, you know, when I started with Friday Combat, I think it was 36. I went, my style's pretty, pretty dialed in. And I heard a number of high-level boxing trainers, Freddie Roach, many of them, others included saying you can't change somebody's style mm. after a certain amount of time they, they, you know they have like Manny Pacquiao was fighting some some other high level dude and the high, other high level dude has a new coach and they're like oh we're gonna have a new game, game plan and Freddie Roach is like you know what I'll get hit once and he'll revert back to who he is we're yeah. not worried about any change so I kind of keep that in mind I know who I am at this point it's, I'm not, I don't need to reinvent the wheel to win. Like, yeah, it might be better for me to have my hands out here with small gloves, mm -hmm. but it's not my style. I feel like it's going to take a lot of effort to do it, and I'm already good at what I do, so 
I basically do kickboxing camps. Okay. I don't, I don't really train for anything else. There is a transition period about three weeks out where I start doing what you guys were doing. I'll do sparring a lot lighter and about the same pace you were doing. And I'll put the small gloves on. Usually I'll do three or four hard rounds before with boxing gloves and then I'll do the light sparring after about, I think, a week out from the fight. I'm like, you know what? I should probably put these karate combat gloves on and actually punch a pad with them. But I only do that a week before because they're not pleasant to no. hit anything with. Yeah. So you end up either take damage or you just hit lighter. So mm. I basically leave it until the last possible moment. Aside from that, I just switch my mindset. So when I'm doing my pad work with the big gloves, I try to remember that I will have small gloves on mm. and there are small adjustments that need to be made. Like maybe as I slip, having my hand here, where normally there's a big thick glove, which will cover there, that's not going to happen. Nah, yeah. So I need to come a little higher. Or I need to remind myself sometimes that I can't go close fist, so I'll take my boxing glove in between and I'll stretch it open and just try to remember it's palms, mm. palms to the head. So it's just more of me doing the same thing that I always do, but just with a different mindset yeah. as I execute. Okay. When do you stop sparring? When you're in camp, how how far out from from a fight? I don't have like a exact thing because it's very much based on what's your comfort level with your sparring partners. That's mm -hmm. a big element. So if you have sparring partners that you're very comfortable with, you've sparred with them for ten years, you know the risk of injury is so low that seven days out you can go and do a hard sparring session. And I've done that seven days out, or maybe eight or nine. But I'm like, man, if I get hurt now, I won't recover no. by the time it's fight day. But I know I've sparred with this guy for 10 years. We've had one or two stupid injuries, which are just completely accidental. And more, more likely than not, I'm going to be okay. So I'll spar with them. If it's with somebody new that I've never sparred with or something, I won't even, I won't even go with them probably two or three weeks before because I'll just go, I, this is my peak time. And if you twist my ankle or something, it's messing with my my last couple of weeks of camp, which to me are the most important. Um, in terms of sort of easing off the training in general, um, I say that's very personal because I've tried seven days out, seven days out from the fight, no more training. Mm. I've tried training right up till two days before the fight. Uh, um, each person's going to have their own, their own time where they feel like this works really well for me. I prefer about seven days out to go seven or six to seven days out. Be like, hey, camp's over. And all I do after that is some light shadow boxing and some light stretching in the room, but no more hard stuff. Like, just no, no more running, no more, uh, no more pads. I've tried it and I just feel sluggish and I feel beat down. And then the last memory of, of me hitting pads is a, is a negative one as opposed to like finishing seven days out and being like, okay, I feel like, I'm awesome right now and let's just leave it. Just call mm. it a day and I'll start my week at tomorrow. So yeah, everybody has their own thing. Same with sparring. You sort of pick and choose. I say if you feel safe and you know the guys are safe, and you know, I have a few elements of protection that I use is that some people don't. Like we spar with knee pads. Mm. And the knee pads often remove the, the ability for shins to clash in the knee or both guys throw knees and you can bang. So even just having those, um, gives me a lot of confidence in the sparring and removing bumps and bruises. You seem like your your camps are, are very well thought out. Is there a, like, do you divide <laughs> defensive stuff and offensive stuff? Like, or do you sort of just train it all jumbled together or? It's usually all jumbled together. Um, I come up with basically my own routines. Like I just meet up with people. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, I call somebody like, hey, can you hold pads for me tomorrow and meet me here because I'm all over at all the different gyms. Um, it's not a lot of um, classes and things like that. I hardly ever do a class. I think I've done two or three classes at training camp in the last 10 years. So most of it is just me showing up. I warm myself up, do my shadow boxing, do my skipping. As soon as I'm done that, I usually start into defensive drills or drills – uh, geared at the opponent that I'm going to be fighting, just making sure that I'm getting that concept of what they're good at and what, what they're not good at. So we'll drill defense in, in those moments, generally defense that is specific to the opponent. Like if the guy's not a low kicker, why am I going to exhaust my 
efforts defensively with blocking low kicks. So it's all designed defensively around what they're good at. So I get it in my mind. So I get that muscle memory of blocking the same way that they'll throw. And then usually once I'm done that, which takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes usually, defensive drilling, practicing, countering their, their best attacks, then from there, I'll move into all the other stuff, like pad work and burn down drills for, for muscle and such. Uh, sparring sessions are usually the warm-ups, couple defensive sort of drills, just to get the eyesight on point and then move into sparring. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just really what I want to do. I just have my own routines that I prefer, and I seem to work really well with my body at this point. I know I can do this much if I go like a step further past my max i'm going to end up too tired or too injured so it's just me really dialing in what works for me if i was teaching a group of people in a class i would probably go like we'll do our warm-up we'll do our pad work and then once you're tired now we'll do some defensive drills that would probably be my teaching preference okay just people drilling when they're a little fatigued mm. when they're not feeling quite 100 percent, just because that's more of the way the fight actually is oh, that's but, a yeah, yeah. That makes sense. In that regard. Sorry, last, last, last question. <laughs> um, do you do? Do you have people come in and imitate your opponent, or like uh, try to replicate the fighting style? I do as, as best I can. So it doesn't always work. Like with the last guy I just fought, obviously with a very short notice. Yeah. Um, in his very odd style. Uh, I had a couple guys in town who are karate dudes who tried to emula uh, uh, emulate. Sorry, emulate, thank you. Uh, yeah, so try to emulate the, the style. If somebody's a southpaw, I'll try to get the guys to go to southpaw. Um, a lot of the dudes will be like, oh, okay, what is this guy good at? And I'll say, oh, he's really good at right round kicks. So they'll actively try and throw, throw more right round kicks. But it's not me searching for people that are already have that style. It's just the small group of people I train with, they'll just adapt. And then I do the same thing for them. If they have a fight coming up, I'll always ask them at the beginning of a sparring session, who's the guy you're fighting? What's their height? Hmm. What's like, if they're really short, then I'll just get down short and I'll just, I'll just move like them because I just go, you're better off seeing that style as hmm. opposed to just fighting me. You guys have already fought me so many times in my best style. So let's just mix it up. So yeah, if it's my camp, I do what I'm best at. If it's, somebody else's camp which i'm usually not that involved with anyway um but when it is somebody who's who wants some help i'll go over and i'll just be like what do you want yeah. i'm not going to be me to help be somebody else all right it gotcha. works. <laughs> well thank you very much okay bro it was uh, it was a pleasure